So in this video, I want to demonstrate the difference between shells and discs and the difference between rotations about the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. That um, It's hard to keep all of these different pieces straight and it's hard to keep track of what's a dy and what's a dx and which one. And this is supposed to be a clarification because I'm going to provide pictures for each one of these side by side by side so it's easier to identify what's going on. So first, let's just think about rotations that are going around, actually maybe we'll do it by section, around the horizontal axis. So that's either around the x-axis or maybe a line y equals a, because the line y equals zero is the line that is the x-axis. So let's say that we have this region. This is our region that we're rotating. So rotating, in this case, around the x-axis. I'm going to sketch a picture of this and sketch what does this whole region look like. This is that has a hollow interior Oop. and a, a sample piece of this, in the book they call it a washer, really it's a disc with the hole in the center of it. And because we're doing discs, <coughs> notice that this sample disc that I've sort of sketched out, it has a width here. And how wide is this? This width is a change in x value. I notice that because I'm starting here on the x-axis and I'm moving over some particular amount to end over here on the x-axis when I'm drawing this sample washer within the center here. So that means that I know that my integral has to be with respect to x. My generic form integral, I'm going to sum from where the x values start. Where do I start my stack of washers? Where do I end my stack of washers? And so that's going to be, in this case, from x equals a to x equals b, and then sum over the areas of each of these washers. The area of the circle is pi r squared, so the area of washer is going to be pi r squared of the big radius minus pi r squared of the little radius. I'm going to put a pi here, because that's pi r squared minus pi r squared, and again, these widths are delta x widths. I could write that in my picture, delta x widths. So my integration is with respect to x. <coughs> the final thing that I should note is because this is a dx, it means that my curves here should also be written with respect to x. I shouldn't have a y variable anywhere in this function. I shouldn't call it a function anywhere in this integral. So that's about the horizontal axis using disks. Let's do the exact same problem. We're going to analyze the same solid of revolution about the horizontal axis, only instead we're going to use the shell technique. Notice that the picture is exactly the same because I'm going to use the same region that I'm still rotating. Mm -hmm. Here's my picture. It looks like the picture above, only in this case, rather than using shells or rather than using disks, I'm going to use shells to describe this area. So remember, for shells, we're thinking of these as mini cups. I'm going to have a whole bunch of these like little cups stacked inside of one another that are going to fill this integral. So sketching out one of the cups looks like this. Maybe I, I brought separate colors so that here's my sample cup. It has very limited thickness only a little bit thick because we want to stack all of the cups inside one another and I'm going to stack a bunch of them. It's sort of a coincidence that the bottom of this cup lines up with the bottom of this figure. But it's going to be bounded by these two different functions, this left function and this right function. And recall that what is the, the volume of this cup? If I were to unroll it, it's going to be the circumference of the cup times the height of the cup. And the width of the cup is a dy width. So notice this is the case where we're rotating about the horizontal axis. We're using shelves. And the width of each of these shelves is a dy width because the width over here is my change along the y axis. So to set up my integral, my integral in this case, yeah, you can see, let's see that. <coughs> it's with respect to y, 
and my y values, I don't want to sign up all the way from the bottom to all the way because that would be counting each of these shells. I only want to count each shell once, so my summation goes from y equals c down at the bottom to y equals d up at the top. The interior is going to be the area of each individual shell, which is not the area of a circle, it's going to be the area of this unfolded shell. I'm visualizing, I guess it's unrolling this way. It's going to be the circumference, which is 2 pi r times the height. And in this case, this function happens to have a tricky height for this shell because the height is bounded between two of these curves. So the height would be the difference of this curve minus this curve. And the radius in this case would be the y value, how high up. I have to look at my picture to figure out what is the height of the shell. Maybe I'll even label it. The height of the shell is this distance here. because the shell is laying on its side, and the radius of the shell is the distance from the center of the shell up to the edge of the shell. I label that radius R. And again, because my width widths, it means that I'm going to integrate with respect to Y, and all of my functions in here need to be written in terms of Y. So the R needs to change into a Y, and the H also needs to change into a Y. So that's two different ways to compute type of space. Let's look at what happens when I take this region and rotate it around the vertical axis. Around this vertical axis, that could be the line x equals 0, which is the y-axis, but it also could be any other value of x. It could be x equals negative 2, for example. Notice that this shape ends up being a completely different shape than when I was rotating it around a different axis. It's still sort of this bowl figure, so what is this representing? Um, <coughs> this bowl with a hollow center, a funny shaped bowl with a hole down the middle. Um, let's cut out a representative disk. We're in the region where we're rotating around the vert vertical axis and we're going to volume of this solid using disks. So I'm going to slice out, what does a disk look like in this case? I don't have vertical disks. I want to have the disk go with the direction of the rotation. So in this case, this disk looks like a sideways version of this disk over here that has some tiny width. And then there's this hole in the center. And it like that. So hopefully that's a picture of this disk, right? And I want to sum up how many disks do I have, and what's the area of each of the individual disks. Notice that the width of this disk is a dy width. Because as I look along the y-axis, how am I stacking these? These are stacking on top of each other. Each of the widths of these are a change from one y value to the other value. That's how, how far it's changing in width. So my integral is going to go from where the disks start, which is down here at y equals c, to where they end, up at d. And my area of a circle is pi r squared. So this is going to be pi r squared. But I have this outer radius and an inner radius, so I need to subtract out the inner radius. And again, this is dy. My radii need to be written functions of y. Finally, let's go ahead and do shells along the vertical axis. Notice that this region is being rotated around the same, so this, this volume should be the same volume. If I computed it using shells or disks, I could compute it either way. That's a great exam question for me to ask you to compute it multiple ways. And instead of thinking of stacking disks, I'm now thinking of making these cups. And these cups are going to fit inside of one another. So here's a hollow cup that has this sort of thin width. And if I were to keep stacking outwards, I could have more and more and more of these cups. Maybe I'll even do another cup down here in red to give you an idea of what another cup would look like. 
would be. And just like children stacking cups or measuring cups, if you have enough of these cups all inside of one another, they'll eventually fill the volume. Unlike using discs where this was a dy measurement, notice that the width of this cup has the opposite notation, that this width right here is a change in x width. This is delta x. And labeling each of this is like I did over here. The height of the cup is given by h. This is my height. And the radius is from the center of the cup out to the edge. I'll label that r in red. And the width, the tiny narrow width here, is my delta x width. So what does that mean for my integral? I need to sum up my number of cups. How many cups do I have? My cups, although it looks like my cups go from all the way back here to over here, I want to count each cup twice. It means that I only count within this original region for, for counting up my cups, that my integral is going to go from x equals a to x equals b. The area of each one of these cups or shells is going to be the circuits which is 2 pi r times the height, which again, in this case, the height is going to be the difference of these two curves. And depending upon whether you're integrating with respect to x or y, you would have to rewrite the functions in terms of x and y. Um, and again, because the widths are dx, it means that I'm integrating with respect to x. And of course, this picture is a little messier than I would have liked, but I think that this is a really good summary. I have a number of people with questions asking, when do I use dx? When do I use dy? Um, how can I memorize which is which? I would never memorize which is which. Actually, if you just asked me to, to memorize it, I, I wouldn't want you to. I want you to be able to draw the picture of each of the different situations. And from the picture, you can decide whether the width is a dx width or the, whether, the width, whether you're dealing with uh, a disk or a washer which means that your area is pi r squared, or whether you're dealing with one of these cup shapes, which means that your area of this uh, cylinder, the surface area of these cylinders, is going to be the height of the cylinder times the circumference around the outside of the cylinder, 2 pi r.